All right, man. I'm telling you, I'm not taking it easy on you. Because you know what the teams are going to do. The teams are going to come back, and they're going to push back on you. So I'm, I'm going to play the role of the teams here. I'm challenging everything. You good? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. You I'm ready good? to defend it. I, we, have, we have the data. All right, but I'm the one who's going to take the heat. When I walk into these arenas, it's going to be me they're coming after, and I'm giving them your phone number. So we're going. Let's go. Chris Collinsworth here along with Eric Eager. And one thing about being at Pro Football Focus is that everything and everybody – gets challenged by everybody, either our NFL customers, our college customers, our consumer customers, our network partners, whatever it is, we get challenged on everything. So Eric Eager and George Chahuri, our analytics team, have put together a few things that make you scratch your head. If you've been around the football business your entire life, as I have been, and some of these ideas and concepts get thrown in front of you, you begin to question everything you ever knew about football. So we're going to break these down. We're going to do a little series of these things, but we're going to start with some of the basics. And one of the things that I don't think is too surprising is the fact that quarterbacks are the most valuable part of that. And that is measured by you guys with W-A-R, wins above replacement. Explain that just a bit. Yeah, so we basically look at what a team would be without the, the given player, how many wins we would expect them to have, and then you know, put that player in and see what the difference is. And that, you know, basically, we adjust for you know, position and everything like that, but basically that's what we do, and we see quarterbacks come out on top you know, almost, almost universally. So you would replace Tom Brady with an average NFL quarterback, is that right? I, actually, a little bit below average. So you'd think about a player that may be freely available or a third stringer, something like that. That would be our idea of a replacement player, a player that's sort of freely available. Because average, especially at the quarterback position, is pretty valuable. I think you know, two, three, four teams make the playoffs every year with an average quarterback. It's sort of that, like, you know, that player that could be, you know, once you're down to your third stringer, that's kind of who we're comparing every single uh, player to when we're talking about replacement, but it's sort of more glaring at quarterback. And no surprise that the MVP, Tom Brady, comes out number one, eight games above replacement value, which yep. is pretty incredible, especially when you begin to consider the numbers beneath that. Drew Brees, Matt Ryan, Ben Roethlisberger. Talk about that. Yeah, so the thing with, and Brady, of course, gets the playoffs, but, you know, he, he's you know, far above the other quarterbacks in the sense that, you know, a lot of what Brady does is Brady alone, right? Whereas when you talk about Drew Brees, about a little under five wins, he's got to kind of share credit on every play with players like Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara, Ted Ginn, those types of guys. Same with Ben Roethlisberger. Brady, you know, with the exception of Gronk, has played with players that, you know, we haven't graded as highly as the, you know, Antonio Browns of the world. So now we start getting into the interesting part of this. Yep. So quarterbacks are the most valuable. Yep. I got it. Now the next most valuable sort of by position now falls to the wide receiver. So you go from Tom Brady's wins or against replacement at 8.2 all the way down to Antonio Brown, who was in the MVP hunt yep. at 2.6. So basically about six games, five and a half games difference between the value of Antonio Brown, who is in Michael Thomas, the next highest guys on our list compared with Tom Brady. Yeah, and that's, again, just because, you know, Antonio Brown's terrific, but he only has his hand in something like 150 plays a year with his targets, whereas, you know, somebody like Brady or Roethlisberger, you're talking about, five, 600 passes, right? So the, even that sort of volume, you, I think, can explain that. Um, yeah, but you get, you get guys like Antonio Brown, Michael Thomas, so the guys on the receiving end of those plays, you know, they're entering the play oftentimes, you know, seven to 15 yards downfield, so they're already adding value from the point of the catch, and then, of course, a lot of those guys do a lot of damage after the catch. So we've got Gronk coming in next, so that sort of fits in the same category. But what I find interesting is that way down towards the bottom of these lists are the running backs. Yep. And effectively the running backs who are receivers are the only ones that even get close on that list, that it's all about the passing game. Yeah, so guys like Alvin Kamara, Todd Gurley, they're under two. 
uh, wins each, and a, and a lot of their value is generated by catching the ball in the backfield. Todd Gurley, fifth last year in yards per route run, Alvin Kamara first. So every time these guys are going out for a route, they're being extremely valuable. A guy like Le'Veon Bell also, you know, he, most of his value, we think of him as a runner, but his value is generally generated as a receiver. So the old adage of run the ball, stop the run, and you win championships, you would say... Uh, I think it's completely bunk. And, and honestly, so, you know, almost any signal there is basically teams that are ahead running the ball. You know, you get, you get ahead by, by throwing the ball and stopping the pass. We've actually found that in this order, running and stopping the run are the third and fourth most important of those four. So pass, stop the pass, yep. run, stop, stop the, the run. run. Yep. Uh, of, the, of the worst nine teams in the league last year, in terms of yards per carry allowed, seven made the playoffs and eight had winning records. So it doesn't mean anything. It, 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 well, I mean, the, the worst team in terms of you know, stopping the run is San, or Los Angeles Chargers, 4.9 yards a carry. If a team averages 4.9 yards a pass on you, you're the best passing defense in the league, right? So just on a, on a per play basis, it sort of it makes sense. All right, so what does it make sense to me? All right, the passing game is paramount. But the offensive line now has to have a significant part of that, right? You have to protect these quarterbacks. And yet no offensive lineman in the wins above replacement category gets any love at all in this mix. Yeah, and it's, and it's one of those things where when you think about throwing the football, the quarterback has a, a great deal more control than, than I think we perceive. Is that, you know, basically, you know, the, a quarterback's time to throw is very much his variable and not the variable of the offensive line. So we've seen Tom Brady do extremely well. We've seen Drew Brees do well, even though they've had a lot of injuries up front because they throw quickly when, it, when the, you know, situation beckons. Or on third down, they, they add more protectors or something like that. And the offensive line, you know, we're talking about five individuals, very correlated in terms of what they do. And so any one of those pieces, yeah, I think there are going to be plays where it's glaringly obvious that the guy's missing. But over the course of a, of a season, um, I think it's, you know, other things that are going to rise to the top in terms of importance. So despite losing Jason Peters last year, the Philadelphia Eagles win the Super Bowl. So no Joe Thomas in Cleveland, no big deal. Yeah. And, the, you know, you, we've seen teams like, you know, we've seen the Patriots have great left tackles. We've seen them have, in, you know, Soldier be out for a year. They're still a top offense no matter what. Okay, so now the other thing that doesn't make any sense to me is why would the pass rushers not be higher on this list? If it's all about the quarterback, it has to be at least a little bit about these guys rushing the passer, and yet Cam Jordan, Von Miller, very low on the list. Yeah, so we, what we see, though, is statistically speaking, our grades and coverage map to wins either within a season or predictively, both in our, our, our models, you know, to predict games, but also if you look backwards, the teams that do well in coverage do well in a wins-loss uh, perspective more than the teams that do well as, as pass rushers. So and it's more about the coverage than it is the pass rusher. We uh, always thought that, that rushing the passer impacted coverage, but you're saying that coverage likely impacts the ability of the rushers to get there more. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's intertwined for sure. And I think every time we, we see a pass rusher relentlessly going after a quarterback, somebody in coverage has to be holding up enough for that, that player to get home. And I think that is something that, I, that challenged me as well, you know, in terms of thinking about how the game works. But a, a lot of pass plays don't happen. You know, a lot of pass plays come out quickly and you need coverage to stop quick passes. So we had at PFF Aaron Donald as the best football player in the NFL, bar none. Yep. Right? And Tom Brady, a bigger impact, wins against replacement, uh, above replacement. But Aaron Donald is, what, well down the list here as far as... Yeah, this. he's like 25th on the list. And, and I think that, you know, if you take a step back, I think that makes some sense. The Rams didn't become a good football team until they figured out their quarterback position. Donald has been a monster since he entered the league in 2014, and the Rams have sort of been anywhere from 7 and 9 to 4 and 12, and then their quarterback, you know, the coach quarterback combination gets the thing figured out and all of a sudden they're a playoff team. Donald is still amazing, but it, it didn't have the impact on the win-loss record until until they got the, you know, the offense figured out. The other one surprised me was Le'Veon Bell. So, if we're going to put Alvin Kamara and Todd Gurley, the next guy automatically I put into mm -hmm. that category is Le'Veon Bell. Why no Le'Veon Bell? 
you know, I think, you know, he's still in the top 50-ish, but I would say mostly because, you know, when we look at him as a runner, it's 4.0 yards per carry last year, down a yard from the season before, about league average. So you sort of throw out that benefit. And then he as a receiver, we had him with a few more drops than the other players. So, you know, it's not just the positive things that you add that, that go into this, but it's also the lack of negative things. So the Thomases, the Gurleys, the Camaras are giving you a lot of positives with no negatives. Uh, Bell is giving you a lot of positives and a few more negatives, and that's why he's down the list a little bit. So whatever you thought you knew about football, you just go ahead and throw that thing out the window. But we're going to come back. We'll do more on this, and one of it is going for it on fourth down. Teams essentially punt too much, don't go for touchdowns nearly enough down in the red zone. Uh, drafting, the idea of trading up is devastating yeah. for, fan, for any teams. Uh, Quarterbacks under pressure. That used to be the landmark. How does a quarterback do under pressure? That told the story, and yet you're saying... It's more about what he does when he's clean. And, and even bad teams, even the worst passing team in the NFL should throw it more? Yeah, at least on second, second and long for, and first and ten, they should throw it more. There we go. I don't know if anybody <laughs> else is like me. I'm just shaking my head, but the math... Well, now tell them your old job before we go off the air. I used to be a math professor. The math professor. The math says go against the grain. If you want more of it, you've got to go to Edge. You've got to go to PFF Elite. Sign in. Start forming your own theories about the game of football.